Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. In this video of the Plane Maker tutorial series, I'm going to kind of talk about some of the more advanced things you can do with wings and their properties. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so I've opened up my aircraft from last time that I used to demonstrate how to create and modify wings. And you may have noticed I didn't really kind of talk about everything you can do to the wings. That's because there's a lot of stuff you can do, and most of you won't need to do all of it, but if you're designing a fighter, you might want to uh, do some of these things for a more realistic design. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Wings tab, and the first thing I want to talk about is customizing the incidence of your entire wing and of individual elements. So the incidence of the wing is the angle of the wing relative to the longitudinal axis of your aircraft. So when I move over to my wing here, you can see that it's perfectly level as it is right now. Um, now you might want to change your incidence if you find yourself having difficulty getting the aircraft off the ground at a reasonable speed. This is because it'll produce a bit more lift at any given speed. Um, some aircraft also have the incidence at the wing tip slightly negative. This helps especially in fighters with adverse yaw at high roll rates. So to customize the incidence of your wing, you just adjust values in these boxes here, and you can see this part of the wing is becoming slightly angled downwards. And I'm just going to give it a few degrees down at the end, just to avoid that adverse yaw that I don't want. Now the next interesting thing you can do in this menu right here with your wing is you can click this box that says Customize Chords. Now you have this different menu here. So in this Customize Chords box, what you can do is you can offset and change the size of individual elements of your wing. So this is more of an aesthetic choice. Um, there are different ways to do this that might work a bit better depending on what you want it to do, but as you can see, the ratio box adjusts the ratio of your wing cord compared to the mean cord. To offset offsets individual elements. Um, I personally don't use this feature all too much because I usually prefer to do what I'm about to show you. So, you've noticed that you have four, four different slots for creating wings here, and right now I've only got one of them. But if you want to make your plan form a bit more complex, or if you want to do some other interesting things that we'll talk about in a moment, it might be a good idea to make another section of your wing. So I'm actually going to modify the plan form of this wing right now. I'm going to make it slightly less swept. I'm going to make it a good bit shorter. I'm going to increase its tip cord and I'm actually going to also move it back just a little bit. So, sorry. So now I've got a, another part of wing here. Um, now this one's very short, obviously I want to make it a bit longer. Um, actually gonna do that. And I want the outboard section of my wing to be a bit less swept and I want it to be longer. So I'm just going to make another section, another wing, and another dialog box here. And I'm going to make sure that the root cord is the same as the tip cord of the inboard wing. So for me that's nine feet. And make it a little bit longer. Give it a tip cord of maybe three feet and I'll sweep it back, say 20 degrees. And now I want to attach this wing to the end of my inboard section. And it might not be immediately obvious how you do that. Uh, obviously you could just move it by doing this, or you can use this menu up here called Snap To. So I want to snap it to this wing, wing one. So I'm gonna say Snap To Right Wing One. And when I do that, now suddenly I've got another wing section. So now 
Um, now that I've done that, I'm actually going to get rid of my incidence change here. And I'm going to go and change my airfoil of that second section to match the first one. So I'm going to change it from the default to flat plate. I'm just going to go into the airfoils menu. And for each one, I can just make it the same airfoil. Now, if you wanted to have a different airfoil throughout the span of your wing, like for, for instance on an airliner where usually you have a different airfoil at the root and at the tip. So you would do this. So you'd go to the the boxes on the left side here, which are for the root of your wing. Let's say I was going to make this into an airliner eventually, so I'd say Boeing root for this airfoil. And now I don't want a flat plate over here because I'm making an airliner. If I go and select Boeing mid for the middle of the wing, then X-Plane interpolates between these two to kind of fill in the rest of the data for this wing. And if I make the root of my outboard section Boeing mid, now suddenly I've got this nice smooth transition from relatively thick supercritical airfoil at the root of my wing here all the way out to the flat plate at the ends. Now this would be a good configuration for range um, for reasons I'm not going to get into right now because they're quite complicated but you can have multiple airfoils for multiple sections and parts of your wing so that's how you do that. I'm just going to quickly change this back. So now uh, I have a complex plan form for my wings here. I've got two sections. And right now I'm just going to quickly make sure I've got more incidents, uh, points, more elements on that other wing section. So now the other interesting and potentially useful thing you can do to your wings is you can give them special properties. So you may have noticed that there are these four checkboxes right here. So these allow you to make your wings move in ways they ordinarily wouldn't. This is called variable geometry. Now the most common example of variable geometry that you will find on most on the most aircraft is a variable dihedral. Now I'm actually going to just change my plan form to match that of an aircraft, a well-known aircraft that does have this. Uh, so stand by a moment. Right, so now I've got something somewhat similar to the FA-18 Hornet or the FA-18 EF Super Hornet. And so what these aircraft have is they have two wing sections, one inboard that's kind of short and stubby and then a similarly short and stubby outboard section. And these aircraft have multiple wing sections with a uh, movement component in them because they are carrier borne. And because they are carrier-borne aircraft, they have folding wings to make sure that they can be stored more efficiently on the deck and hangar of an aircraft carrier. So if you are designing a carrier-based fighter or other aircraft, you might want to consider this. So if you select a very bold dihedral for your outboard wing section, which is for me wing 2, when you input a dihedral value, maybe 90 or 100 degrees so that those wings fold up and out of the way. Now you notice if you have your moving controls on here, like I do, your wings will fold. So this is only really useful for if you want to design a carrier-based aircraft. Um, 
doesn't really have a whole bunch of other applications. Now I'm actually going to unselect this and modify my plane form once again to show you what the next of these options does. Right, so now I've modified my plan form to match that of the Vought F-8 Crusader. And this is a unique aircraft uh, because first it was, the f I believe, the first Mach 2 capable carrier-based fighter. Second, because it had a really interesting wing. And it had what's called a variable incidence wing. And this is because it had a delta wing which wasn't super great at slow speed flying. So when it was taking off and landing on aircraft carriers, it would actually tilt its wing up a couple degrees to get a bit more lift. So now you can do this in Plane Maker. Uh, you can select the variable incidence checkbox and say maybe you want to increase your incidence by five degrees if you want to take off or land. Now you can see I've got a tilting wing that goes up and down by five degrees. So now what this basically does is it gives you 5 degrees of extra angle of attack, which will produce more lift at any given airspeed. Um, this isn't super useful unless you have a delta configuration that takes off at a pretty high speed, or lands at a pretty high speed, in which case it'll uh, save your test pilots some uh, undue pain. Now the last one of these... I'm going to talk about is variable sweep. Um, we don't really need to go into retractable wings because there aren't very many aircraft that have this um, and it's not incredibly useful for what you'll be doing. Um, but variable sweep is probably one of the most mm, I'd say well known of these three properties. Um, a lot of very famous aircraft have variable sweep wings or had like the F-14 Tomcat, the B-1 Lancer, T-160 Blackjack, the uh, unbuilt Boeing 2707, um, MiG-23, many others. And I'm just going to modify my plan form a wee bit to match an aircraft that might have Right, so if you're making an aircraft with variable geometry or variable sweep wings, um, one th especially for variables, variable sweep, one thing you'll want to do is you want to pay very close attention to the shape of your inboard section. Because if you don't have it shaped properly, especially for variable sweep, when you go to move your wings, it'll look a bit weird and you might have sections of it that stick out where you don't want them to. So I'm just making it kind of shaped like this stubby with a very, very long tip cord, just so I can be absolutely sure that it doesn't look strange when I go to uh, add these variable sweep wings. So I've just remade my wing twos here, and now I'm going to just snap them onto right wing one. And so now I've got a plan form that kind of looks a bit like some uh, variable sweep aircraft you may have seen before. And what I'm going to do is, in airfoils, I'm going to check, you guessed it, the variable sweep. And now you can see that uh, the maximum sweep is actually less than the value my wings are already swept to. I don't want that. If I put them at the same level of sweep as my wings, or similar to, you don't see they move that much. Now, I want these to sweep a good bit back, just so I can have that nice uh, low drag at transonic and supersonic speeds. And now you can see they're, sweep they're sweeping back to 60 degrees, which is pretty close to what the Tomcat did. But you can also see that when they do that, there's this gap. I don't want that gap. It looks a bit terrible, in my opinion. And it will have some sort of negative aerodynamic impact in X-Plane, so I'm actually going to override the snap suggestions as to where my wing should be placed. 
I'm just going to move it in a foot and a third about. Now you can see I've got a very nice looking variable sweep wing. This will give me great low speed turn performance. Also very good high Mach number performance. And it looks very cool. So there you have it. That's how you make fancy wings. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. If you did not, please come to office hours as always. And uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good night.